Craig. So we start off tonight with one of your letters, and it's from 12-year-old uh, Hayden Roberts. Hello, Hayden. Hayden wrote to us uh, from Wales. And he wants to know all about the latest Jack D ad uh, on TV. That's the one where Jack walks through a whole series of disasters. So for Hayden and all his family, who are with him tonight, here's how Jack D never knew what hadn't hit him. Never mind, you'll understand when you see this. Admin are always on at me to liven up my advertisements. Jack D strolls through his latest commercial. As usual, he's laid back and totally unruffled. What we need is a bit of action, Jackie. But every step he takes is a miracle of survival. No gimmicks, no Is this Jack's nonchalance pushed to the limit? Or did he just not realise how close he was to death? So how did they get him to do that? The real challenge of this commercial was to take Jack put him in lots of different death-defying situations. He's being crushed by this or almost run over or falling off that and to really make people believe that he was there. Admin are always on at me to lie. For a lot of this, Daniel and the team used what's called chroma key. Jack is filmed in front of a plain blue background. Later, Daniel can replace the blue screen with any background he wants, like speeding cars. To get this background, Daniel filmed 14 rally cars. He gave each car a number and then worked out the pattern and order in which they were to drive past the camera. Between the cars, there had to be just the right gaps for Jack to walk through. And to do that, Daniel carefully calculated the distance Jack would walk and the exact time it would take. This wasn't easy. The cars really were screaming along at 70 miles an hour and each one had to appear to just miss Mr. D. How did they get this shot without wrecking their camera? Extra smooth taste. Well, Daniel placed an angled mirror on the track and filmed the reflection of the truck. On film, it would seem as if the truck was hurtling straight at the camera, having picked up one of Jack's penguins on the way. I told the stunt driver to drive up to the mirror at about 30 miles an hour and bump into the mirror. Uh, in fact, what he did was he put his foot down, went at 70 and smashed straight into the mirror. We decided that was the take we'd use because uh, it wouldn't do another one. <laughs> I don't think it's enough to talk about its extra smooth taste. Then in post-production, special effects director Tim Weber took the shots of the speeding cars and of Jack walking in front of the blue screen and put them together. But this wasn't convincing enough. It still looked as if they almost cared about their star. The real key to, to making uh, the shot look dangerous was to add extra layers of cars once we'd superimposed Jack on the background. Uh, so within the computer we layered uh, a number of cars on top of him, just behind him, just missing him, to, to give it that extra uh, edge of danger. To liven up my advertisement. It's this layering technique that makes this shot so spectacular. They just don't get it, do they? It took several takes, but the tower of cars had to fall in exactly the same place every time. Otherwise, when Jack was added to the shot, it might look as though he'd been flattened. So the tower of cars were fastened to a reinforced metal pipe. At the bottom of the pipe, there was a fixed hinge. The hinge made sure the angle of the fall was always the same. The pipe made sure the cars were always anchored together. Even though we knew where the tower was going to hit, it actually was quite dangerous, so we had to build a special crash box around the camera, and all the crew had to stand back, and when it hit the ground, it was like an earthquake. When he worked on the shot, it was Tim's job to make Jack appear to be right inside the cars, not in front of them. So how did he do that? He used the process called layering. With his computer, he drew around every frame of the car roof. This gave him a mat, a moving black and white shape that exactly matched the outline of the falling car roof. Tim used this as a layer in front of Jack. Then he put the actual roof back in. So now Jack seems to be right inside. If Jack was really standing underneath the tower of cars, they would have cast a, a 
large shadow over him. So we use the computer to darken Jack down so that it appears that the tower is actually falling on top of him. As a finishing touch, we then add a cloud of smoke as the cars crash down on the ground, uh, which helps blend the whole shot together. What we need is a bit of action, Jackie. They just don't get it, do they? Well, so after going to all that trouble, what's Daniel's favourite bit of the ad? My favourite bit of the ad is a bit which actually nobody notices. It's when the pipe lifts up into the air, it swings towards the camera. We had to do a completely different shot, just the back of his head disappearing down the pipe. It's very subtle, but you really believe he's in that pipe. Definitely no penguins. And how about Tim? In a pub. My favourite bit of the commercial is when we added a seagull uh, flying a behind Jack as he's balancing on the girder. A lot of people wouldn't notice it, but uh, it's the kind of touch that I really enjoy. So, if this is a bit dull... But I wonder if Jack enjoyed it all. When Jack saw the, ad, the final ad, uh, it was a surprise to him because none of the backgrounds had been there when I filmed his bit. Uh, he's known for having a sort of straight-faced demeanour, and when he saw it, he actually went like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think he did enjoy it, actually. So you're going to put the pub background in afterwards? Yeah, yeah, that's right, Jack. Huh. Yeah, we're going to put it in later.